Gambia stands out as an exception, actively advancing women's rights and including them at all levels of government and business. Today we have a project which is unprecedented with its gender orientation. The contractor, a woman myself, the consultant and engineer, a woman, Marie Sengor, and the lawyer who negotiated this contract, a woman, Ms. Ida Drame. The sky is the limit for women in the Gambia. They are recognized for their significant contributions to the success of the Gambian economy, an economy based on quality. We took faith in Guinness quality. We are faith in Africa. Everybody is proud. A small place like Goodbrook taking faith in Africa. It's a big crowd. Pride is no stranger to the skilled and motivated Gambian workforce. They know their job. They are honest and trustworthy. You can depend on them. Gambians understand that it's a competitive world. Have to make sure that you are always a step ahead of the competitors. Otherwise, investors have choice. In 2004, the World Economic Forum ranked the Gambia as Africa's sixth most competitive economy and first among the West African countries. We are one of the smallest countries in Africa. And we are ranked one of the best in Africa in terms of uh, transparency, in terms of the fight against corruption, in terms of political stability and good governance. Small, it is a great advantage because it is easy to organize logistics, for example, for investors. GIFSA, the Gambian Investment Promotion and Free Zone Agency, is the one-stop shop for streamlining the process for setting up a business. We established this agency to deal with all matters relating to attracting and establishing an investment in the country. Everything will be done ranging from land issues, immigration issues, licensing issues, and even if you are conducting a feasibility study. Because it's so small and the government is so small, we can you know, talk to the top people in any department and you know, get a final answer on, on any question we have. The Gambian Chamber of Commerce and Industry is actively working with the government to promote private sector involvement in the future development of the country. In the last three years, we have heavily invested in the Gambia and have modernized all our banking premises and also the processing systems to world standards. It's easy to provide backup infrastructure service for investment. Communications, technology, and highways are bringing even remote corners of the Gambia within reach of the world. The infrastructure all around here is growing. It's grown in the Gambia. It's grown in Senegal. They're building roads all the way through Senegal. This particular road is going to go all the way up to Gibraltar. Daily flights touch down on new runways at the Banjul International Airport. Banjul is one of the most modern and well-equipped airports in uh, Africa. But in the sub-region, we have the longest runway. That's why NASA is using it as their landing site. There are certain countries you have to drive 1,000 kilometers from the hinterland to access certain facilities. That is not the case with Gambia. Modernization is everywhere. Cell phones and cyber cafes are just a few of the signs of a country wired for business. The growth in IT in this country puts us in touch with the world and opens up all those horizons for us. From any computer terminal, whether in your house or whether in a cyber cafe, you can get information, whether it's for education, personal, whatever. From vocational skills to healthcare, education, and farming, NGO involvement in developing the country is invaluable. The government has created the enabling environment as well to encourage organizations from the outside to come and participate in national development. We have reached a point where communities quite clearly know what their needs are. Okay, so the shift is, is, is about uh, the communities taking a central role in articulating their own needs and taking uh, center stage in addressing those needs. You can have resources, you can have natural resources in abundance, but if you don't have a committed leadership and a dedicated people, you cannot get anywhere. This, I think, is our greatest strength. Which better place can we live in West Africa better than Gambia? Hustle-free, 
People are proud uh, but friendly enough. People are peaceful. In fact, I say the most peaceful country between uh, West Africa. This is one country also where you find tourists walking in the streets up to 4 a.m., 6 a.m. There are good schools there. I know people who have come from the States and, and their children were born there and lived there you know, for, for most of their lives and, and we're very happy about it. You're guaranteed 12 months of the year sunshine um, between breaks in the rain, <laughs> of course, this time of year, but there's a dry season of eight months uh, where you're guaranteed no, no rain at all. Yeah, the wrestling matches are just, it's a neat thing and it's something you won't see anywhere else. The different tribes come in and each has their own team and it's a weekly thing and it's like just a lot of fun to watch. I like birds. The best time you can hear him around this time and early in the morning when you tee off by 7 o'clock in the morning. It's lovely. The weather is nice, the songs of the birds, different kind of birds you find. Normally you see like these huge lizards and um, normally in England you just, you don't like really see any lizards. So. And monkeys as well, you see them in zoos, not like in their like natural habitat really. There's bars, there's restaurants, there's casinos, there's the beach, you know, there's kind of the, the local nightlife and, and it's just a lot of fun being there. The Gambia's changed. It's changing all the time. It's growing and moving and, uh, and it's the same with Makasutu as well. We feel that we're in the right place at the right time. If governments, if the World Bank, if all these people are doing something for the infrastructure of this region, then I'm willing to be part of it. They don't pump in their money because government wants them to. They pump in their money because they think it is profitable and it will be a viable investment over time. And if we, as a very poor African country, as the smallest country, one of the smallest countries in Africa, if we can achieve what we've achieved in 10 years, imagine what the next 10 years could be. the stories making our headlines I am Ajami Sise. The first feed mill located on Gambian soil is up and running. Construction of the mill that adds value to agricultural products like locally grown rice and produces animal fish and poultry feed began in August 2010. Water Qatari officials managing the farm today presented samples of the mill's first product to President Jame. Meanwhile, His Excellency the President of the Republic of the Gambia, Sheikh Professor Alhaji Dr. Yahya Jame, acting under the provisions of Section 71, 73, 71 and 71 3 respectively of the Constitution of the Republic of the Gambia, has effected the following cabinet appointments. Dr. Momodo Tangara, Minister of Foreign Affairs, International Cooperation and Gambians Abroad, Mr. Abdukuli, Minister of Forestry and Water Resources, Dr. Maria Masar Sisi, Minister of Higher Education, Research, Science and Technology. History was made Sunday morning at Wesley Cathedral in Banjul, where the Methodist faithful converged for the consecration of the first Gambian Methodist Bishop and the first female to lead a church throughout West Africa. Before taking up her spiritual duties, the Right Reverend Hannah Falheim worked as a nurse and rose to the position of maternity manager. Meanwhile, the day after her consecration, the venerable religious figure this morning met the Vice President Dr. Esther Njai Sadi at the State House, as well as the presentation of protective boots meant for women farmers, Canal Life Farms, and the National Environment Agency to the Vice President.
When reports of a cholera outbreak in Senegal